So I'm beginning the canvas, which is a six inch uh, gallery wrap, deep edged gallery wrap canvas, which have been pre gessoed, which are available from most art stores. And I've placed some Distress Ink and a post it notepad underneath so that it gives me a little bit of stability when I'm going to be doing some embossing paste through this fabulous stencil. This is my new Steampunk Heart stencil, which is available on the website to pre order, um, or will be available on the website to pre order for the general public in the next week or so. Um, if you're an angel, then you can already go on there with your angel password and order it now. So all I'm doing is just putting through some of the Winsor & Newton modeling paste through the stencil, and I'm just going to pass it through, make sure I've got a nice, decent amount going through the stencil um, to create that lovely cog and gear pattern in that heart shape. Now, later on, most of this does get covered up. Um, but you still see the texture underneath all the other layers so it is still worthwhile doing a little bit of texture underneath so I'm just going to put that modeling paste through and then give it a real good dry before I can do anything else with the canvas So I'm going to start the drying process with the heat gun, but I want to put it to one side and leave it to dry naturally. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to take out my laser cuts that I'm going to use on this canvas. I'm using um, two sets of my laser cuts and I'll just show you which ones I'm using. This is the Cogs and Gears laser cuts and this is what you get in the pack on those. These again are available on my website now. And I'm also using my new Regals laser cut set. And once again, I'll show you what you get in the pack there. So those again are now available to purchase. So those are the two packs of my laser cuts that I'm going to be using. Now the canvas is dry, so all the embossing paste on that canvas is dry. You can see the nice depth on it. And I'm going to start um, by gluing down some of the cogs and gears. Some of them I'm not going to use, so those ones there I'm putting away for another day. But I've chosen these ones that I'm going to use. And I'm going to glue them down using my new hot glue pen from Bosch and it is cordless, there you can see, no cord at all. So I'm going to just add a little bit of the glue to the backs of the cogs and then stick them straight down onto the canvas. So I bought this new glue pen because Ian kept borrowing mine and not putting it back. So I thought I'd buy a replacement and I wanted one that was cordless because I'm not tied then to a plug socket. I can literally sit at the dining room table now and stick things down, which is a huge bonus. And what I like about using the hot glue guns um, on projects like this, that even if you stick something down and it sets, um, you can still take it off again just by getting your heat gun on it and just remelting the glue underneath and it'll just lift off. And I do actually do this a bit later on because I do make a mistake as I'm putting the stuff down onto this canvas and I do keep that mistake in the video so you can see how I rectified it. So those are the cogs and gears that I'm sticking down for now. I'm going to take one of the pieces from the Regal set, which is the frame element. So these are the bits and pieces from that Regal set. And it's the frame bit that I want to play with for now. I'm going to take that frame and I'm going to glue that one straight down over the top of those cogs and gears that I've already stuck down on there. Now, the reason that I'm doing that now is because I want to paint uh, and go over everything with gesso at this stage. Um, because if I stick everything else down, I'm not gonna be able to get underneath the wings when I finally stick those down to get that gesso on. So I need to add the gesso now. And as you can see, it didn't take long for it to stick. I'm now ready to start adding that gesso and I'm using the Dina Wakely black gesso. These are the last remnants 
of my pot. I have got a replacement one that I purchased from Art From The Heart a week or so ago. So I'm going to begin just by adding the gesso all over the canvas, including the sides of the canvas too. And I'm also taking it a little bit away around the back. But this again is one of those long, boring, laborious processes that nobody's got time to sit and watch somebody just paint something the same colour. So I'll show you a little bit of the process of me getting so far in and then I'll jump to the point where I've completed the entire coverage. And here's the canvas now completely covered in that black gesso including the sides and the back. So I'm going to pop that to one side and then I'm going to bring out some of the other elements from the regal set that I also want to add to the canvas. Now I'm going to paint all of the um, the elements I'm going to use from those sets with the black gesso but I'm going to paint both the front and the back with the black gesso. So I'm just going to start off with the wings and then I'll jump to the point where I'm just finishing off the last few bits and pieces so you can see I've done the oval and I've done the fleur-de-lis and I'm just doing that other cog from that cog and gear set that I want to use on the canvas. And of course, I have done both sides of the MDF, as you can see. Um, so this is the second side I'm just doing now. And then I'm going to give them all a quick heat blast to get that gesso nice and dry. Now that all of my elements have been painted both fronts and backs, I can bring the canvas back in and warm up my glue gun again, and I can start to stick the elements down all together. So I begin by adding a little bit of the glue onto the edges of the wings and then stick those wings down onto the frame. Now this is where I kind of made that mistake so I'm just sorting out an extra glue stick to go in the gun. Um, but this is kind of like where I made the mistake. Um, when I stuck the wings down onto the frame I forgot that I wanted to add the oval over the top so I didn't put the wings uh, inside the oval shape. Now by adding the wings inside the oval shape rather than right up against the edge of the oval opening, um, when I put the oval on it, it kind of just dropped straight through, which isn't really what I wanted. I wanted to use the edges of the wings to hold the oval in place like that look. So as you can see, it's, there's not enough of the MDF shape for it to actually hold. Now I did think, well, if I add the glue first, um, that might add a little bit of traction, a little bit of leverage just to hold the oval in place. But unfortunately it didn't, it just kept slipping and falling back in again and that's not what I wanted. So to rectify it, I grab hold of my heat gun and I start heating the wing edges again. So I do it to the point where the glue starts melting once again and I keep checking to see whether or not they're actually moving. As you can see, I'm at that point now where the wings are just going to come straight off. Now all I have to do is just to clean off that excess glue and then we can start again. And if you don't manage to get all of the excess glue off, it's not too much of a problem because we are going to be adding more colour and more layers on top of this so that it will be disguised anyway. So all I'm going to do is just like take off as much of that excess glue from the backs of the wings as well that I can and then I can start adding the glue back on again to stick it back down in the right place this time. When you're doing a project which is as intricate as this, it's very, very difficult to think so far ahead as to what you need to do to make sure that you know, you're doing everything in the right step. Just to hold that wing up on the left, look, you can see I've just added one of those um, MDF elements underneath it just to hold it, to stop it from um, dropping down. But it didn't really need it on the right hand side because I just held it in place until uh, it was secure enough to be left on its own. So now that the wings are in place, I'm just making sure that they're staying where they're going to be. I can then add the glue just on those tips and then my oval will then sit quite nicely over the top and this time it won't fall in. And as I said earlier, I'm not too worried if you can see some of the glue because it will be painted over and disguised later on with the colours that we'll be adding later on. So now that they're down, I can now start adding and gluing down the rest of my MDF pieces in place.
So with the addition of those two little fleur-de-lis shapes at the bottom, that's as much as I can do at this stage because I have one or two other little elements that I want to add as well. So one of them is this resin um, cast cherub from Prima Marketing. This is one of the only ones remaining from the pack that I purchased a while ago. Um, and I don't know whether or not they're available anymore, um, but you can always try on Amazon or on eBay. Uh, and I'm just going to completely cover the cherub with the black gesso to make sure that it's exactly the same as all the others. So just one coat is going to be enough for this. Um, and then I'm going to give it a quick blast with the heat gun to make sure it's all nice and dry before I add it to the rest of the canvas. So my heat gun's all warmed up again, and as you can see, it's starting to flash red, which means the charge is going on it, so it needs to go back down quickly. Uh, I'm sticking down that last cog and sprocket in place, and then I'm going to stick the cherub over the top of that. So there's just enough power and juice left in the glue gun to add that last and final element of the cherub. So my cherub is now stuck in place. Now you can see there are some blobs of glue sticking out the side of the oval. I am going to remove those. Um, and I'm going to show you how I did it. As you can see, they're now gone. But I removed mine with a craft knife, in my case, a scalpel. And all I did was just push the scalpel into the glue and just removed the excess. I just cut it and um, just chipped it away using that, that craft knife. We're now ready to start adding colour. And the first colour I'm going to lay down is the Kingfisher Blue Metallic Paint from Indigo Blue. So that's that beautiful metallic tealy colour and I have a little spritz tube. I'm going to add some of the paint into the spritz tube uh, and I'm going to add some water in there um, and I'm only adding a little bit of paint and then filling it up with water and then I'm going to um, give it a good shake to make sure that the paint mixes with the water and that's creating my metallic um, paint spritzer. So giving it a good shake to mix up the paint in the water and then we're just about ready. Just test, yep that's coming through now so we're ready to start adding that to our canvas. This Kingfisher Blue metallic paint is just one of my favourite colours from Indigo Blue. I just think it's absolutely gorgeous. So now I've given it a good spritz in all over. All the paint has dripped into all the little nooks and crannies. I'm now going to start manoeuvring it and start letting the paint run backwards and forwards, up and over. Make sure some goes down the sides of the canvas too. So I'm just going to keep tipping it from all different directions just to make sure it's all nice and moving and that everywhere is getting a nice little bit of coverage of that beautiful metallic paint. And when I'm happy with the coverage, I'm going to bring out my heat gun and give it a very, very good blast, making sure that I don't hold it in one place for too long because it'll melt the glue again. But there you can see it's all nice and dry and it's time to add my second colour, which is the Goldfinger metallic paint. The Goldfinger obviously is gold and I'm going to start dry brushing that gold paint, um, just adding some to the craft mat, picking it up with my brush and then start dabbing and adding that dry brushing and picking up on the edges and picking out the texture from the canvas.
And the beauty of doing the dry brushing is you can go as heavy or as light, you can go as bold or as subtle as you want to. It really is up to you what your preference is with these colours. I just like adding a very light and subtle coating. It isn't going to be the only metallic paint that I'm going to be adding. I will be adding a third colour a bit later on. But So I'm just going to go over with um, the gold just to add in a little bit of that gilding effect all the way around, catching the corners, catching the edges and, and I'll go and make sure I also get the deep edges of the canvas too.
Okay, I think that's enough of the gold on that canvas for now. So I'm going to just put that to one side because as I was doing this, I realized that I'd forgotten two of those MDF elements that I wanted to add to the canvas. And these are the two elements that I forgot to add. They are, um, I suppose you could call them hexagonal bolt heads uh, or nut heads if you want. So I'm just going to grab the black gesso. I'm just going to give them a quick coating with the black gesso. And then I'm going to grab the heat gun and give them a dry. And then I'm going to bring back out the Kingfisher blue paint. And I'm just going to go over the top with them, uh, of both of them with the Kingfisher blue so that they then blend into um, the canvas when I glue them on. Now I've already switched off the, the hot glue gun. So rather than drag that back out again and wait for it to warm back up, I'm just going to add these nut heads onto the canvas once they're dry with um, standard PVA craft glue. And once they're stuck down and in place, I'm actually just going to leave them to dry for about half an hour. I'm going to go make myself a nice cup of coffee and have a cuddle with Mr. Bentley and then come back once they're dry. So it's been about three quarters of an hour and they're now stuck in place so it's time to bring out the third colour which is the Miss Moneypenny Copper Metallic Paint again from Indigo Blue and I'm going to do the same thing with the copper paint that I did with the gold. So I'm going to go over all the elements adding a third metallic sheen over the top. Now this also adds a kind of metallic -y, older kind of rusty effect to it which I think just adds greatly to the texture. And it was while I was adding the copper paint that I thought to myself I could have added some embossing paste uh, texture through a stencil actually onto the wings that would have had a nice effect so that's an idea maybe for another day or for another canvas where I can actually add some embossing paste onto those wings when I use the regal set again but for this one I didn't want to go through the process of taking those bolt heads off the wings and then fiddling around with the stencil and embossing paste once it had already started to add the finishing touches to it so it's an idea for another day. So I'm going to continue adding that copper paint just by dry brushing all across the canvas and I'll jump to the point where I have finished and I'll show you the entire canvas and the sides when it's done. So there we have it, all the paint added and I'm very very happy with the way that this canvas has turned out with all of that fantastic texture with those MDF shapes. So I hope you've enjoyed watching me create the canvas with these MDF shapes. They are very very effective for creating some depth and texture onto uh, a mixed media canvas like this. So this canvas, which I've nicknamed Prey, is available to purchase on my website and as, I've, as you've seen there is only the one um, and it is going to be sold on a first come first served basis. But if you would like one making for you as a specific commission just drop me an email and I'll sort something out with you and we can start a dialogue. So I hope you have enjoyed watching it. If you did, please remember to give the video a thumbs up, share the video with all your friends, and if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. I'd also like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels, because without you, these videos wouldn't be possible. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again real soon. Bye for now.